welcome back to Jay's Giants. Um, not much going on. I've been prepping a lot of beds. Um, been busy in the patch, uh, taking care of my plants. I actually called uh, one of my 2405 Gunstroms. I'm going to get you guys in here, see what I got left, and take you for a quick walk around, see what I've been up to. Hey, let me turn this camera around. And this is... 2405 Gunstrom. This is the one, obviously, that I kept. Uh, probably five, six feet long by now. Secondaries are starting to grow. I say the longest one's probably maybe eight inches, six, eight inches. Um, she's doing good. I, um, I had to extend the, the hoop house a little bit. It's not the prettiest thing, but I'm gonna get the job done because it is going down into the 30s <laughs> uh, in the next next couple nights. That has me nervous. So I'm gonna button this hoop back up. You guys can take a look at my, um, my watermelon house. I got that ready to go. Just waiting for some better weather. Hopefully this weekend, all my watermelon plants are going out. I'm growing three watermelon plants this year. One in this hoop house. I'm not going to open it up. But you can see sort of inside of there. There's a straw mat. But anyways, I put drip tape in here. Landscape fabric. Uh, and then I put that straw mat in there. There's also heating cables. Um, which I haven't turned on yet. Uh, this hoop gets well over 100 degrees when the sun comes out so I doubt I'm actually gonna even need to plug those cables in and today I prepped a long gourd trellis down there I had some leftover straw mat and I don't know if you can see right there I leave that little area open and I'll put my long gourd plant way in the back here and I'll let it grow maybe four or five feet before it heads up the trellis. That way it gets gets itself rooted in along those first few nodes. This um, here is mustard. For the most part it's mustard. A little bit of wheat that came back up after I tilled. But one thing is interesting. If you look over right in this area, it's kind of hard to see in the camera. But it is so much greener and thicker and lush. And the funny thing is, I don't know if it's funny. This is where my stump was last year. I had dug this out with my tractor, filled it in. Here, you can see it now. Very distinctive. Wish the whole patch was like that. Anyways, so that's that. Um, the rest of this mustard is pretty crappy actually but at least it's keeping the weeds down uh, there's the old tread light broad fork the back buster okay here's where another watermelon's going this year this one did not get soil heating cables I really did not amend this one either I uh, broad forked it I rototilled it I added four cubic feet of perlite um, actually I did that before I rode it to it and then it got landscape fabric and the straw mat just today so she is ready to go uh, raised bed I don't want them to grow in here probably cucumbers for my wife still got filled out up don't let anybody laugh these are my giant onions I know they suck uh, I don't know what I'm doing Sounds pretty decent. Hope they'll get bigger. Right, give me a second. Guys, now I gotta walk all over the place because I got my garden spread all over the yard. All right. I'm excited about this bed this year. Um, actually, this spot. Right here, watermelon number three. Um, this was tilled, amended, 
there's soil heating cables in here you can see the drip tape landscape fabric straw mat and she's ready to go um not the biggest spot like 11 by 13 i think um but i think it'll do good this one gets good morning and afternoon sun but it loses the evening sun pretty quick so this area here is gonna be giant tomatoes in cages and all this black dark stuff it's compost that i make um probably could age a little more but i'm basically using it as a mulch i uh i tilt up maybe an inch or two all around where this watermelon's gonna go so all out here down here i just tilted a little bit added amendments and i put cardboard down and then I put this, I bet there's three inches of mulch all around. And plan is to plant the tomatoes down deep into the original soil. And then kind of backfill in a little bit with the, with the compost. And hopefully that's going to keep the weeds down. And see how it goes. I'm also trying to grow my tomatoes. Well... I'm gonna grow down this row here. I'm gonna put the row of tomatoes down there, the whole way down to the end, and grow them on this fence. And down there, I got those poles. I'm gonna try the string method where people string their tomatoes up. And then I got another one here, these cattle panels, and I'm gonna plant the, the tomatoes all along here. Probably. I don't know, one, two, three, maybe six tomatoes along there. And then six on the other one, maybe four out there. So let's get a nice handful of tomatoes in there. Let's see, hopefully that Pennsylvania record goes down this year with the watermelon record too. And that's my skinny patch. I, um, I amended this for giant pumpkins. And I told my wife I was going to grow veggies in here. But now I'm having second thoughts about veggies. Because, to be honest with you, I don't eat much veggies. See all that? That ain't veggies, I tell you. Yeah, it takes more than veggies to keep that gut. So anyways, hope you enjoyed the trip around the yard. Or the garden. Uh, don't forget, vote Team J. Um, got till May 31st. If you want... You can vote for Team Jeff, Team Scott, Team Doc. Um, but I got a good feeling this year. We're going to see how it's going to go. And um, I appreciate y'all for watching. Take care. So here's a quick time lapse of how I prep uh, one of my beds. This is that skinny patch. Um, goes pretty quick. Adding amendments here. And then I'll do a final till. And then next I'm just going to show um, some of the watermelon beds. This is the one I prepped up today with the drip tape, landscape fabric, a straw mat, and this is my longboard trellis. Thanks for watching.